Hello, this is Annette with Project Refine Life. Welcome to my channel. I am sharing the Embroidered Graveyard Oracle by Alicia V. She is the same creator that brought us the Embroidered Forest Tarot. I just received this Oracle deck in and because I am doing my only 10 decks for Lint, I haven't really played with the Oracle deck yet, but I have gone through it. I've shuffled it, I've put it back in order just to feel how the deck is in the hands and just to kind of get a feel for it, but I haven't worked with it per se. I have gone through the guidebook and I will give you a little bit more in depth in that in just a little while. The deck comes in this beautifully constructed box, has all this beautiful rose gold foiling within it and has that nice little magnetic closure opens up it has that beautiful little saying right here and then on the inside look at that it is just stunning beautiful the cards let's get into the cards a little bit 68 cards are featured in the kickstarter edition i am not quite sure if you order the first edition now through pre-orders because this is all sold out if it will have 64 or 68 cards. I'm a little confused with that information. In one spot, it says that if you do a pre-order on the first edition, you will get the 65th card. And then another spot in the guidebook, it says that 65 through 68 were only included in the Kickstarter edition. So I am not quite sure if you would get 65 or 68 if you ordered it at this point. So the cards are these beautiful, listen to this. Oh my goodness, 350 GSM luxury thick cardstock with a silk gloss lamination. These cards are so nice in the hands. They feel so good and you can feel a little bit of that embossed, beautiful gold foiling in it and it is just so pretty. It has these beautiful holographic rose gold foil borders and then look at these gorgeous gorgeous the gorgeous edging on this it is just it is a stunning deck and now on the back you have this beautiful reversible planchette beautiful this is this thing is just gorgeous the guidebook is to me where i mean this deck is beautiful right but the guidebook I will get into the details of it after the flip through, but this book is a beautiful 250 page guidebook. This so-called guidebook is filled with rituals and spells and spreads, um, ideas about programming your deck and I'll get into it in just a little bit, but it is a really, really good book, not guidebook, book. Let's get to the flip through for this beautiful deck.
let's dig in a little bit deeper. So now I've shown you the cards, I've shown you the box, but let me get into a little bit about, I think what I love most about this deck, I love the deck itself, but this guidebook is really something. Now, for those of you that don't like to use the guidebooks, if you buy books on any of these subjects, you can just buy this deck and it's in here. Some of the practices may look a little bit different than yours, but it really does include some really good rituals, some really good spells, and some really good protocols for working with your deck or any other tools or workings that you may be doing. Let me go ahead and share the table of contents. So we have the introduction, disclaimers, safety and protection, using the deck for spirit communing, using the deck for introspection, using the deck for as a grief and depression aid, programming the deck, activating spirit connection, disable spirit connection, program a card as an avatar for spirit. Then it goes through and it gives you the card meanings for all 68 cards. Then you get into rituals and there are, as you can see, if you wanna slow down the video so you can really get an idea of how many rituals are in here. Then she also provides 13 spreads for this deck. Now getting into the real meat and potato of this deck. She offers this really nice introduction about using the deck. And I do like how she describes the uses for this deck. It says this deck confronts the reader through ups and downs of life and aims to allow them to call back their power, no longer living in fear's shadow. Knowing we are mortal is a superpower. We can use this knowledge and decide to take action now, achieving huge, bold lives that bring us a lasting contentment and existential peace. This is really a great book. Here she has disclaimers because unfortunately we need to include them now. <laughs> and this right here, the first thing that she gets into are safety and protection, which are very, very important when you're doing any kind of work. So she has a whole um, write-up about safety and protection. And I'm gonna try to just come back to some of these cards here so you can see. So cards number one and two are where you are calling in or creating your circle and then your goodbye just like on your spirit board, is when you close your circle and you're dismissing those who have come to help you with your work. You're letting them go. You know, I don't know how many people, I do, but I don't know how many people actually have this idea of calling in your spirits, your ancestors, your guides to help work with you while you're working with your decks. I do. So I really did like the idea that she put this right up front and center, like calling your people, find your space, protect your space, act on, ask for only those who are there for your highest and greatest good to be with you. And then at the end of it, close your circle, dismiss your peeps, say, hey, thank you guys so much for being here, for helping me out. And I will call on you next time. Thank you very much and goodbye similar to your spirit board where you say goodbye not that i have a bunch of experience with the spirit board because um and it's not it's just not something that i do but i like that she included this in the deck now she also talks about using the deck for spirit communing and she speaks of using the deck and how to use the deck using it for introspection and also as a guide or an aid for depression and for grief. But one of the things that I liked in here was that she touches upon programming the deck. So you can use this deck for spirit communication. And also she includes how to, how 
to program the deck and how to deactivate it as well. A lot of times I see like how to do something, but they don't tell you how to undo it. And she includes that in here. She also um, talks about programming the deck as an avatar for spirit. So if you want to call in a specific spirit, I just think this is so well done. I really do. It is really, really good. I always like reading about somebody else's practice and to see how they do things and see if maybe I can incorporate some of what they do into what I do. It makes it my own special practice. So I think that some of these um, rituals may be a little heavy with the tools, especially if you're new and you don't have a lot of the tools. Just know that anytime you see a tool, you can substitute or there's nothing better than your hands as tools. Seriously, we have everything that we need inside of us right now. All you need is a candle, your hand. If you have one rock, a crystal, you can program the crystal to activate and to do whatever any other crystal will do. Seriously, it's, it's that simple. But she does have some very easy things here. Nothing is too difficult to find in looking at the ingredients within the materials that are needed for the rituals. So I think that is pretty cool. Okay, let me go ahead and move on. Another thing, look at, oh, isn't that cool? Look at, she has a little bookmark here within the book because it is a book. It is a book that has oracle meanings in it, <laughs> but it's a book. Okay, so going through the cards, there are five different icons within the deck. And I'm gonna go through those right now. If you can see those little icons right up at the top corners of the deck. So you have four spell cards, which are your first four here. So absolute protection, goodbye, familiar, and abundant intuition. Then you have your earthly action cards, which are represented by these little skulls here. And these images are just beautiful. I fell in love with her work with the embroidered forest. This card, oh my goodness, it is just beautiful. Like that is, this is a sacred rage card and everything that's just inside of you, sometimes it feels like you're just gonna burst. But to me, this is like this one indication of where true growth can come from is within that rage. And look at, as, as it busts open, she has all these butterflies just flowing out of her. And she looks like she's in a backbend type position. It reminds me of camel pose. I, this deck is just, it is stunningly beautiful. And if you read, sometimes you may think that the title may not go with what you're looking at, but if you read the book, you can see how they connect and how they are related, and it is just wonderful. Okay, I'm getting a little off track here. So we have cards five through 19 for the earthy actions. And the earthy actions are the cards that center around the actions that we take to make the most out of our life as we know it on the plane of existence. I'm reading from how she described this deck. The next 15 cards are animal companions and they are depicted by this little butterfly right on the corner of the deck. And the animal companions are of course where we ask to notice, respect, and care for the animal companions that we have and we share on this world. And a way to learn from them and earn perspective. Okay, the next 15 cards are goddess guides, and these are all represented by these little crowns right here. Now, these are pretty cool because each one of them represents a goddess, and I'll get into that a little bit more in the guidebook, but if you don't wanna work with the goddess specifically, you can always look at this image and work on it in that perspective. This one, I just love that. Look at that. That is, that is beautiful. I, this deck is, this deck is stunning and the amount of work that she put into this is amazing. Look at this, the surrender, look at the, like that, that web 
of entanglement that we can produce and get into. But each one of these is actually a goddess. So as you can see, there's enough within the depictions or the embroidered work that she's done to work on it on its own if you don't wanna work with the goddess energy that is included in this deck. Now the next 15 are depicted by hearts and it is our dearly departed. So once again, beautiful, beautiful depictions for these next 15 cards. This deck is just so beautiful. I love that. This is the community deck and this was the Kickstarter this is number 65. Every card has the description of the card, the spirit communing, and the introspection. It's very well done. It's easy to read through. You don't have to take a lot of time within the deck to really get to know it because it is pretty cut and dry. Each one, she does have a thank you to whoever purchased the original artwork, which I think is so kind of her to include their names and to show her appreciation. Just that feeling of reciprocity, just giving thanks for them to buying her original artwork. And I mean, some of this is just, it's so stunning. But it's easy to look through the meanings of each and every card. And like I said, there's enough within here that if you don't want to use the guidebook, you don't have to but it's very well done. In the area of the book, right after the description of all the cards, there starts the rituals. It gives you a definition of ritual, and then it even tells you how to cleanse your space, your circle, and casting. So, like I said, if you're new to it, it's great, and if you already have these types of rituals or spells in your practice, I, like I said, I love looking at other people's work and how they do it because, you know, it may, I may find something that I really like and I want to include. How to close your circle. A lot of people tell you how to open, but they forget to tell you how to close. And that is extremely important. Otherwise, you have all these people around you, all these spirits just hanging around, waiting to go home. Okay, calling to ancestors, deity, and universal protection pre-reading mantra. I mean, there is just a lot. Ancestor honoring, the rituals, the materials, everything is in here. Like, this is such a well-done book. This is far more than a guidebook. This is a book. It even tells you how to work with your inner child. In one place, she talks about journaling. This one I love because I so believe in this, and it's called The Sacred Duvet Day which is sometimes you just gotta slow down, take it easy, don't draw a deck, don't do anything, just sit there and be a vegetable. Just relax, put Netflix and chill. We need those days. We need those days to recharge. Um, now, this area here I thought was so very neat. Uh, this is the petition to work with a goddess. So, in the goddess area of this deck, which is depicted by the little crowns. These, these depictions are related to a specific goddess, which is a pretty good list. It's a list of 15 goddesses that you can work with. It shows you the ritual on how to petition them. And then here, what I like about this is that even though it doesn't say the goddess that you're working with on this specific card, because like I said, it gives you the option to work with it any other way that you want to. But on page 204, there's a complete list of each goddess that is associated with that specific card. It tells you the card number, the name of the goddess, the herb that can be used to work with the goddess, the crystal, the magic, the element, the color, and the symbol. It is incredible. Okay, then you have the spells. So the spells, she even describes the difference between a spell and a ritual. And the spells are all here. They're easy spells, and most of them are pretty easy with the ingredients that are needed or the materials that are needed. And like I said, if you have your own practice, you can just look at it. If you wanna use some of it, you can use some of it. I just think it's a really good book. I keep calling it a book because to me, it is a actual book.
And then she has spreads, 13 spreads. Now, how often do we get 13 spreads? Now, at the end of the book, she has further reading. I love it when, when this is included in any book, further reading on how to go ahead and dig a little bit deeper into what you're looking at or what you're working with. I just think it is amazing. Deck pairings. Well, of course, the natural deck to pair this up with is the Embroidered Forest. And you know what? Getting this deck really has made me pull out this deck more and really appreciate just the beauty in this deck more. And as soon as my 10 days for Lint are over, Actually, this was the one deck that I was waiting for. I do actually have room for this deck and I will still be at 10. So this might be it guys. This might be the 10 that I include in. I am not quite sure yet, but this, these two are just gorgeous. She does have a new edition available where it doesn't have the white borders, but I'm content with my first edition. I'm okay. At this time, I don't think that I'm going to be replacing it, but they are just, of course, they're stunning together. It's the same beautiful work that she did on both decks. The second deck that I have in mind is the Antique Anatomy. The Antique Anatomy has all the same flair as the embroidered graveyard. It has these flowers, it has these tools, it has these skeletons and body parts. It's very centered in black and darker colors, and I just think they play very, very well together. I haven't read with these decks, in none of these that I'm suggesting. This is just based on aesthetics alone. The next deck that I thought about was the Marigold Tarot. Now, putting it right up next to it, I was maybe hoping for a little bit more and it didn't really play as well as I thought aesthetically, but I think energetically, I think they'll work marvelously together. And of course we have the same type of aesthetic here. And this is just such an amazing deck. I really do love this deck. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and work with it and try it and see how, um, how the readings turn out for me. Another deck that came to mind was the Santa Muerte Tarot. Now this is a special deck to me and although the Santa Muerte is a little bit different in styling, you still have all of these skeleton type figures and this is more Dia de los Muertos, but let's face it, they're, they're skeletons, right? And even though it is different, there are a lot of similar energies within the two decks. I use the Santa Muerte a lot for ancestral type work. This is probably the way that I'm gonna end up working with this deck anyway, so these will pair very, very nicely together as well. Those are my deck pairings that I have in mind. Again, I have not worked with the embroidered graveyard deck as of yet because I was really trying to keep to my 10 decks for lint and I wasn't quite sure if I was ready to work with it or not. But after doing all of this deep dive into the guidebook and looking at it and how it works and where it wants you to place the energy and everything and, and just the guidance that she offers within the guidebook, I really am excited to get to work with this. So I think I'm gonna be choosing one of those decks and maybe making these two into my last two that I have for these last few days. My overall thoughts on this deck is that the cards are stunning. They are absolutely beautiful. The card stock is amazing. I mean, just look at this thing. It is just beautiful. If you are a good shuffler. I am not that great at it, but also I am at a very weird angle. If you could see my setup, then you would know how unconventional <laughs> my posture is right now in order to get this. So as you can see, it will shuffle well. I don't really riffle shuffle. I mostly overhand shuffle, but the images are beautiful. The card stock, as I said, is amazing. The quality of the box 
is just beautiful. It's so well made. She just put so much thought into every aspect of this deck. And then not only did she put in thought into the deck, but this guidebook, this guidebook guys is really a book. It, I keep saying that it's really not a guidebook. It is a book. And I kind of see this deck, the way that I would work with this deck is similar to the way that I work with the Living Altar Oracle, where it is a living, breathing thing that will be part of my workings. That's the way that I see this deck working for me, but you have a lot of options with this. You can just work on it as an Oracle deck, or you can take it a little bit further for spirit communication or for ancestor work. And I did a whole video on ancestral work and books to use for ancestral work. And I think this is one of the decks that would definitely be a great addition to that type of work. So I'm not quite sure. Once I get to working with this deck, I'll figure out how exactly I'm going to work with this deck. But as far as cost and value for this deck, I think it is amazing. The guidebook is easy to read. I will admit that these letters get a little bit difficult to read, but I have had decks that are much harder to read. And really, it really does add to the overall aesthetics of the deck, which I am all about. So I'm okay, I can live with that little thing. That's all right. And like I said, I have, as far as cost goes, I've paid more for other decks that have less value. And I'm not meaning that, I'm not saying that to be mean to any other creators or decks. I'm just simply stating the fact. This deck is a very good value for the quality. If you just got this deck with this box and a little white guidebook, like we normally get on every other indie deck, most people would be satisfied. I mean, we get that all the time. But this one comes with this amazing book, and it is a really amazing book. It's filled with resources for you. Whether or not it fits in with your practice or not, there are a lot of resources available for you within this book. And that alone, that alone is valuable. That's it. That's my walkthrough of the Embroidered Graveyard Oracle. I think that this deck and this book are absolutely stunning. I think that I'm going to be able to use this deck for a long time. And I think it's going to bring great value into my existing collection and also in my inner workings. Thank you so much for joining me through this walkthrough of the Embroidered Graveyard Oracle. I wish you nothing but peace, love, and happiness from my heart to yours. I will see you later.